Welcome to Triggered Wrestling. This is your boy Adrian Santos right here. Today we're going to be reviewing Monday Night Raw from July 17th, 2023. We're going to be discussing some key topics, sort of like Teddy Hart arrested again. Hmm, a new champion was crowned. Probably two, probably three, but stay tuned. DJ, spin that shh. Triggered Wrestling, it's so awesome, all the way around. That gets me triggered. Ooh, okay, well let's go with the bad trigger right now. See, I'm a, I'm a fan of all of it. We'll force you to watch Trigger Wrestling. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Brian Garcia, here with Adrian De Los Santos, as usual. It is now a hundred and something degrees here in Sacramento, California. Adrian, how you holding up? Oh man, it's so fucking high. You have no idea. The weekend? The weekend was what? 106, 105? 109, bro. My balls, balls, oh. balls were sweaty. Damn, but you know who else was sweaty though? Who? Somebody's boy named Teddy Hart. That dude got arrested, <laughs> arrested. Mugshot all over the interwebs. He was looking pretty messed up, bro. I'm not going to lie. But we'll get there later on in the show. Let's get started here with Monday Night Raw. Unless you got something to say, Adrian. Oh, yes, absolutely. I got something to say, bro. What you got to say? I- I'll leave it for the show. I did have something, but I'll leave it for the show because it involves some of the segments. And there's going to be a lot of exposing going on. All right. Well, Monday Night Raw starts off with American Nightmare Cody Rhodes making his entrance, getting on the mic. Talking about his mom. Ain't nobody quite as awesome as his mom, except maybe Rhea Ripley, Dom's mom. (laughs) Nah, but in all seriousness, essentially this is a babyface promo setting up the documentary that he's going to be having here on Peacock in a couple days. He hugs his mom. Brock Lesnar's music hits. Nobody comes out. Goes silence. Then Cody goes to the ramp to confront him. He goes up the ramp. They disappear. And all of a sudden you see a chair being thrown. And then Cody Rhodes being treated like a little bitch. (laughs) getting smacked around the arena adrian what do you got to say about this when i saw cody rhodes come down the ramp his music going fireworks going off i saw cody rhodes in gear and i'm like yes about fucking time we're getting a cody rhodes match here on monday night raw but guess what fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me fool me thrice I don't know how it goes, but it's fucking whack, bro. They're making Cody Rhodes look like a bitch. That's my boy. That's my guy. I mean, come on, bro. Really? Does Brock Lesnar really need to break Cody's arm once again so he can get an advantage on him? I don't know. Paul Levesque is not booking Brock Lesnar just like a beast. Like how Daddy Vince was doing it. Yes, I said that. It's like one week, it's Brock Lesnar's turn. The next week, is Cody's turn. One week is Lesnar. Then the other week is Cody. It's like, come on. When- Cody went Super Saiyan one episode and took out 20 security guards. Took out Brock Lesnar with a Cody cutter, and then all of a sudden he forgets to turn Super Saiyan this week. Possibly got his arm broken again. I don't, I don't know, man. This this false advertisement. Oh my god! to be on Cody Rhodes is it's, it's not it. I don't like it. Well, he did get F five right in front of his mom and put in the Kimura lock in front Por? of his mom. Por? <laughs> Damn. Por. Por, Bendy. Anyways, no. Nah, but seriously, I like it, dude. I mean, he's not gonna have a broken arm this time. It is what it is. So we'll actually get closure at fucking SummerSlam for this situation. It is what it is. Yeah. I I guess I'm just feel a little triggered because that is my guy. I've been liking Cody Rhodes since he left WWE. I've been following his career and I'm like, all right, good. People, not me. People are saying you finally made it. You're back in the WWE. Now you're going to get your chance. And chance was blown not once, not twice. I I don't know, man. Let's see where this goes, because these little two, three minute, actually like 10 minute promos that lead to nowhere. But we all knew this was going to lead to a match. I mean, I, for me, I would say I can cut out Cody Rhodes' TV time from start. I, I can cut Cody's TV time and we'll have a good match at SummerSlam. We don't need this five, 10 minute promo segment on Raw each week. Give us a match. I want a Cody Rhodes match. Give us a Brock Lesnar match on regular TV. That would that would put Raw at five mil, if you ask me. You think so? You think that would actually get them five? million bro brock lesnar on free tv i think so and for the right price i think brock would do it maybe 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 oh man adrian i don't think they got five million fans dude (laughs) (laughs) i'll be honest now they got them actually they might bring some people back they might i don't know but i would think if they have brock lesnar being a good match not just against any jobber have a good little match a solid competitor i think it could get 5m jesus anyways moving on we have gunther Versus Matt Riddle for the Intercontinental Championship. 
Do you want to talk about the match or you want to talk about the promo after the match? The glorified squash match that nobody asked for? Nah. Damn. All right. So, you know, it was a good match. That's all I'm going to say. Was it a squash match? Yes, it was. It was a glorified squash match. Gunther wins by pinfall with the Tenryu powerbomb. After the match, Gunther gets on the mic on top of the announcer's table saying that you can boo all you want. But he's the greatest intercontinental champion of all time. Wait, intercontinental heavyweight champion of all time. Is that what he said? Did he say heavyweight? Yeah, he said heavyweight. I didn't know they added weight classes. Mm. Anyways, intercontinental champion of all time. He said he's done with Matt Riddle and he's building a legacy and God damn it, Drew McIntyre, you're next. <laughs> Yeah, bro, he fucking threw down a fiery promo being a champion. He didn't need the rest of the Imperium. He did this all by himself. This guy, this fool really got it all. He's a great wrestler. He's got a great gimmick. He's good on the mic. Poor Walter, bro. If what I'm hearing is correct, shake my head or or whatever the fuck Keith Lee said (laughs) in that tweet. This guy, this guy's going places. Yes, he is. One thing I do want to say. So that promo, the reason why I think you like this promo and why I know I like this promo was because this promo was under two minutes long. Just get straight to the point. (laughs) Call out your opponent. (laughs) Say your line. (laughs) And keep it moving. That right there, that's how you build somebody. You know, you don't need all this gimmicky, all this 30, 20, 60 minute segments. Give Gunther a mic two minutes or less. Have him say his line at the end with the title, any title, and it's going to be gold. This was a gold promo. I actually like the promo better than the match. Can he be a top guy? Can he be the world champion? I hope so. Do you think so? This guy's got world champion written all over him, dude. If Vince McMahon was still around, which I'm sure he still is around, he would be loving Gunther right now. He is the typical villain that Vince McMahon loves. This guy's got it all, man. He really fucking does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Man. And then moving on, right after that, we have a backstage interview with my new favorite women's wrestler, Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez. And then Liv essentially says that they don't back down from anybody. Names a few tag teams like Chelsea Green, Sonya Deville, Trish Stratus, Zoe Starks, Katana Chance, and Kaden Co- Well, she got cut off at that point because guess who shows up? The faction that likes to interrupt. Rhea Ripley. And Raquel and Ripley get in a stare down. Raquel says to Rhea Ripley in her face, not even you. You can't even stop us. And then a brawl breaks out. You know, you see Rhea Ripley deliver a right hook to Liv Morgan. (laughs) Bam! Knockout. Then Rhea Ripley and Raquel Rodriguez start, you know, the street fight. All hell's broke loose. You know, there's people. Sorry. Then Raquel Rodriguez and Rhea Ripley start going at it. You know, hockey style match. You know, moving all over the place. People come out out of nowhere, try to separate them. And guess what happens out of nowhere? Rhea Ripley injures Raquel Rodriguez with the weakest, weakest kick ever. The weakest part of kick ever. How did Raquel Rodriguez get injured with that? I don't know. I want to say she's been hurt previously in that knee, or am I tripping? Or is it start right now? I haven't really been a fan of Raquel Rodriguez for a while, and I haven't been watching WWE since the beginning of this year, so I wouldn't know, to be honest. All I know, dude, is I actually like this quick segment. It showed up really fast, and uh, I just love WWE's jump cuts, like when when the, the camera guy starts zooming in and shaking the camera, bro. Oh, yeah, like a POV vision, right? Yeah, like, oh, fuck. I mean, it's just crazy to me. I like it personally. I know a lot of people are like, get seasick and complain about the WWE and their fucking wiggles. <laughs> I mean, I wish the AEW could do that shit, bro. You, you know why they do that, right? For dramatic and to hide the botches. I mean, they got over 30 years of experience over there, bro. Yeah. It's actually funny because I actually read online that Raquel Rodriguez got injured by Rhea Ripley. And then I saw the episode afterwards. And I'm like, oh, damn, that's how she got injured? Then I see CO pipes falling down from equipment boxes. I'm like, damn, did she hit her with the pipe? No. She hit her with the weak-ass Spartan kick to the knee. One of the weakest ones ever. I didn't even think she made contact. Oh, my God. I'm not going to get too much into this, Adrian. You can say whatever you want, bro. You know, hear me out because I'm about to expose your ass, bro. All right. Last week, you said, oh, Darby Allen landed on his head. I didn't see it. The camera didn't catch it. But you could tell the way his feet landed and the way physics works. You could tell. Hey, first of all, correction. It was not Darby Allen. I said it was Nick Wayne. 
Nick Wynn, okay, yeah, Nick Wynn, my bad. You said you didn't see it, but somehow you still think that you saw it, and even you described it. So did you look it up? You said last episode that you were going to look it up. I looked it up, and okay. that did not land it on his little head at all. Mm, pues, all right, whatever. But you know what I did see in this segment? These nuts? A weak-ass <laughs> Spartan kick to the knee. A, a weak-ass kick that didn't even make contact. I know you saw it. Nah, bro, I can not tell with there to be shaking the camera around. You got a seasick too, bro? <laughs> 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 fuck man and the only reason why i brought it up is i know the fans me and you as well too we won a real ripley versus raquel rodriguez match to me this makes her look weak i mean she's champion one week relinquishes it she thinks she's gonna win it again with shotzi loses a match Liv morgan comes back they win it then something happens later on the show that we'll talk about all right all right let's move on let's get there because i really want to talk about that with you to expose you bro Judgment Day are now in the ring, coming back from commercial break. Ray Ripley says that her Latino heat is going to become the NXT North American champion on Tuesday's NXT. Enter Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. They say, oh, we're going to fight you in a tag match later today, right? And I think that's the main event, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. Perfect. Okay, so uh, going backstage, Raquel Rodriguez and Adam Pierce is now backstage with the trainer saying Raquel is technically good to go, but he'd prefer to cancel the match. They got to get some scans done. Raquel says, I still want to go out there. And they go to break. And then that was the match. Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville versus Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Adrian, you said you were going to get into this later. We're now here. So what do you got to say? What I wanted to say is, I mean, they're making Raquel Rodriguez look weak, man. And I've said it before about Rhea Ripley's opponents. Selena Vega, nobody before she faced Rhea Ripley. She only got the title match because of PR. Now she's a nobody. Dana Brooke, I love Dana Brooke, lost in the shelf. Natalia, lost once, twice, nobody. Raquel Rodriguez, you got a good woman that's taller than Rhea Ripley. She has the skills to back it up. And you weaken her by making her lose the titles and with the weak-ass Spartan kick to the knee. I mean, you got to make Raquel Rodriguez look strong to have her go against Rhea Ripley. Otherwise, it's going to be a glorified squash match. But that's just me. I know that WWE fans love jobbers. Love that Cinderella story from jobber to main event. But that's not me. I don't like that. I mean, if you're a jobber, you're a jobber. Bro, you're an AEW fan. You guys love having storylines with people's dads dying. It wasn't that Cody's MO in WWE? I could be mistaken. I think that's the only wrestler in WWE that has that storyline going on. In AEW, it was Wardlow. It was uh, Brian Pillman Jr. It is Nick Wayne. No relation to Bruce Wayne. But yeah, that's the third guy. That's gimmick is my dad died. Oh, and Jungle Boy too, bro. And Jungle Boy too. That's his gimmick that his dad died? That was his gimmick for a little bit. Was Jungle Boy saying that he's going to do everything for his dad? I mean, he was. If I could be mistaken, right? I mean, I think you are mistaken. I think Christian Cage was using that as an excuse to give low blows Jungle Jack Perry. I don't think that's a gimmick. Mm, I don't know. Either way, they brought up another person's dead father. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. The reason why Wardlow grew out his hair was because of his dad had cancer. I don't think that was his whole gimmick. At that me- Come on, bro. Stop. We're going to go back to that topic. So, so you can have one week gimmicks <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god so now we're creating our own stories here in wrestling do you not remember Air, uh what's the name <laughs> the the miz guy the miz's stunt double what's the name damien sandow damien sandow he was like the macho man one week and then the next week he was uh <laughs> hulk and then the next week he was something else bro come on now bro, you know who's doing that right now matt cardona in the indies too man i think he's a- the overtaker or the yeah. indie taker. <laughs> that shit's funny. Yeah, and then he showed up in <laughs> AW as uh, trying to be the Moxie. He did the Moxie jiggle when he sh- first showed up in JCW. I don't know if you've seen that video. Nah, bro. I watch good wrestling. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> JCW's fine, but I didn't see that. Uh, anyways, back to the Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville match versus the Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez, Adrian. Oh, yeah, man. I, for a second, I really, really thought Liv Morgan was going to win it all, man. She looked strong against both of them. But the numbers game obviously came into play. We have new tag team champions. Karen herself, Chelsea Green, and Sonya Deville are now the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. And they vowed to make the division relevant. Do you think so? Bro, Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville winning the tag team titles like the best thing that could have possibly happened to this championship. Like, I don't know. I just like them so much together. So they finally, they finally get some gold. 
I don't know, dude. Like when Chelsea Green first showed up, I know you. I had mixed feelings. You had mixed feelings about it, but now she's a champion, bro. And and I'm not complaining. And there's a lot of people online. If you read what's going on, a lot of people are not yep. complaining. They really like Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green here. So yeah. I'm I'm excited to see what happens here. Obviously, this is eventually going to show. Uh, it's going to be Raquel Rodriguez versus. Ray Ripley one on one at some time. Who knows if that's at SummerSlam, but that is going to be the eventual payoff there. But I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Sonya Deville, I'm glad she's champion. The main reason why I love this, absolutely love this, you know, besides the Raquel Jagger's looking weak, I love Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville winning is because usually WWE used to do something like, say, me and you are tag team partners. We have a little story brewing, right? You get injured and then I'm lost in the shuffle. You know, this same thing happened with Carmella. It was Carmella and Chelsea Green. Then Carmella got pregnant. Happy for her. <laughs> That's not an injury, bro. She got knocked up. No, I know. Yeah, she got knocked up. Usually in WWE, it would be that one person that would have to be lost in the shuffle, or would have to come back. And they improvise and they put Sonya Deville with her and they make something great. You know, I, I may hate the vignettes or the videos that they have with Chelsea Green. But this championship reign, I like it. I, I want to see more where they take it. They only name three tag teams. And then when I say they, I mean uh, Liv Morgan earlier on the show. Hopefully WWE puts something on this tag team titles. Give competitiveness. Because I like it. Yep, yep, yep. Speaking of competitiveness, we got a vignette here from Seth Rollins talking about a short list of challengers for the World Heavyweight Championship. But that list includes Finn Balor, amongst others, uh, Damian Priest, Drew McIntyre, and Gunther, of course, uh, which we mentioned earlier that if he's going to be in the World Championship chase soon, looks like he is. He's interrupted by Finn Balor, and Seth Rollins tells him that this is a chance to take your shot or get out of his face, and Finn stands up and throws a chair at Seth Rollins' head <laughs> and ends up beating his ass in the backstage here. <laughs> What do you got to say about this, Adrian? At first, I was not liking it because Balor was like, go talk to Priest and tell him I want a rematch. I'm like, <laughs> bro, you know you could do that, right? People are making their own matches. Oh you could go ahead and go do that. Because uh, Rollins was saying, you're living in the past, you know, move on. And Balor replied with, well, I'm not living in the past. You know, I'm living in chaos. And chaos is where I'm going to take this title. That line right there, I was like, that's a champion right there. That's a champion champion. And Balor continues on and says, I'm going to do the same thing you did to me. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to laugh in your face. And I'm going to alter your career forever. <gasps> My man spitting facts, bro. He's not. He's not spitting facts. Finn Balor spitting facts, bro. Nah. Balor's being the new champion. Best believe, bro. I'm Tim Balor right here, bro. Flip-flopping. <laughs> Flip-flopping. Well, he ain't going to win. We know that for sure. Anyways, uh, then we get the gimmick match of gimmick matches. The Alpha Academy, Chad Gable, Maxine Dupree, and Otis versus the Viking Raiders, Eric Ivar, and Valhalla in a Viking Rules match with Titus O'Neil being on fucking commentary, dude. And I don't like him on commentary. And I don't like this match. <laughs> that was that was weird. Titus, who, what petition was given out to people in the roster or in and arena in attendance that said, who wants Titus O'Neil to be a commentator? Who signed that? I want to know who signed that petition because he does not need to be on commentary. He really does not. Just like this match should have not been on TV. Viking rules match. Very similar to a Texas tornado death match. Makes no sense. It's essentially a hardcore match with Viking themed foreign objects in the ring. Yes. Viking Raiders win by pinfall and this shit don't make sense. It doesn't. Damn, bro. Are we in bizarro world here? Because I'm not going to say it was the best gimmick match of all time. I was sort of entertained. I, I kept my eye on it. It was cool. I like stuff like this. I didn't mind the, you know, the over the top doing it with Chad Gable. I just think you let Otis and Maxine Dupree do the gimmicky stuff. Let Chad Gable do the wrestling and you have perfect chemistry right there. I did like the match, sort of. There was a part, there was a spot. Forgive me if I butcher their names, but Viking Raiders, they sort of look the same to me. One of the Viking Raiders tried to catapult themselves from the second rope onto Chad Gable, but he held on for like a second. And then Otis came in, threw the moonsault, Otis picked them up and did a body slam on him. I was like, for a second, I thought Otis' knee was going to snap because the Viking Raiders are big men. But for some reason, I popped in that one. I was like, damn. That, that was a good catch and a good body slam by Otis. By Otis. That was a good highlight for me. It was, dude. It was a good highlight. You know what wasn't a good highlight is why was the ring area filled with smoke? Oh, that I don't know. Yeah, that I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Like, they're Vikings. They're not magicians, bro. Why the fuck is there smoke? <laughs> 
instead of the smoke, you know how how the ring apron has a uh, like the TV screen or the LED screen. Do you want to have fake smoke, bro? No, they would. They should have added like some waves or something. I mean, they had the the boat. You're right. They, maybe yeah. maybe that's what they were trying to do with the smoke. Make it like seem like water. Oh yeah, or something. But I would have liked that. But you're right. The smoke was kind of. Like, look, bro, are you going to start doing some magic or something? You fucking over here smoking some brisket or what, bro? <laughs> that was a lame joke. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> then we get a, a squash match. Nikki Cross and Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler wins with a carefoot clutch. Match is really is over. Uh, the commercial lasted longer. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, there's not a lot of women in this show. I mean, we just talked about women. We got to give this some time. So... Ronda Rousey appears in the skybox, gets on the mic. She's been thinking about Shayna saying, you slipped in the back door. (laughs) Anyways, that's a sexual joke. (laughs) Uh, She asks if it's easier to go in the front and climb your way up the ladder or go through the back. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) Pa. I'm sorry. I can't take this fucking seriously. (laughs) Uh, You can't blame privilege or circumstance on the fact that she's the greatest combat sports athlete of all time and that Shane is just a cheap knockoff. You know, it is what it is. So they're they're gonna have a match at SummerSlam and Shayna Baszler better fucking win or else I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah, I mean, there's been reports that Ronda Rousey is trying to ask for a release or her contract is up after SummerSlam. So we don't know what's going on. I mean, it could, it could be true. It could be false rumors. We don't know. Am I invested in this match or in this feud? Absolutely not. I, I don't know. I would just I even try to pay attention to the promo. Maybe see if I could get something out of it. No, I'm not even invested in the promos either. I just, I don't know. I just think Ronda lost her full momentum and people are just done with her. Hopefully, this match with Shayna Baszler can have the fans flip a 180 and like Ronda again or like Shayna. Because both Shayna, for sure, she's been in the business for a while. She deserves a good run. But we'll just wait and see because, you know, right now is the feud starting. So let's just wait and see and then, you know, we might change our minds. Who knows? This is true. We might change our minds. And I'm going to change my mind because I'm pretty sure they're going to have a good match. I also think Ricochet and Logan Paul are going to have a great match. So we get a, a brief interview backstage of Ricochet where he talks some trash about Logan Paul, setting up some heat. Obviously, Logan Paul is not in the building. That's why they had to have this promo to keep the storyline going. Adrian, you want to say anything about the shit he talked? No, um, Prince Puma pretty much said it, you know. Right here in WWE, Logan Paul is a joke. And to everybody in the social media world, everybody's a joke to Logan Paul. Because he thinks he's the top of the social media world. And Prince Puma basically announced to make an announcement next week. No, wait. He announced for a TV segment next week. Will we see some physicality? Probably. Will we tune in? Obviously. Are we going to like it? Who knows? Tune in next week to listen Triggered Wrestling. Hey, speaking of Triggered Wrestling, we get Miz TV up next with Becky Lynch as the guest. The Miz reminds her that she lost to Trish Stratus, lost in Money in the Bank, <laughs> lost to Zoe Stark, <laughs> and that she's lost the step. Bro, he called her a jobber, bro. He did call her a jobber. Miz is the king of the jobbers, and he said, you was a jobber. <laughs> yeah, he pretty, he pretty much called <laughs> her a jobber. Disrespect. The disrespect is true. And The Miz, he doesn't get a lot of wins himself either, but he's not expected to because of his character. Speaking of The Miz, he took a big L in his personal career, not involved with wrestling, and we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Anyways, uh, of course, they're interrupted by Trish Stratus and Zoe Stark. Trish says Becky is acting like a toddler and asks why she's so obsessed with her. And she says she's not going to fight her because she already fought her in one. In fact, she's done with her. Adrian, obviously, they're going to fight here. Fine. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to say? I didn't like the way Triz accepted the match. Similar to the way Tony Storm accepted the match against Taya Valkyrie for, I believe it was Rampage or Collision. It's like, oh, accept the match, accept the match. Basically, peer pressured people they want to challenge to accept the match. And they just say, oh, yeah, okay. All right, yeah, I'll accept your match. I, I, I don't like that. I didn't like it in AEW. I don't like it right here. But Becky Lynch accepted the match on a few conditions. Becky has to defeat Zoe Starks again, and that match is going to be a next week on Raw in Tampa, Florida. After that, she's going to have to get on her knees and say thank you, Trish, to her face, and she's going to have to tattoo her chest, and it's going to say thank you, Trish. Ooh. Yeah, bro, that shit ain't happening. She's going <laughs> to I know. I'm like, when you give crazy-ass ultimatums like that or stipulations or... 
You already know. This is really old school. Let me bring up a weird stipulation here. Do you remember the kiss my foot match between Jerry Lawler and Bret Hart? Yes, I briefly remember it. Yes, I, I think I'm getting it confused with the kiss my ass club from Vince McMahon, but I think I remember it. Yes. Yeah. So it's Bret Hart. And Jerry the King Lawler at King of the Ring or SummerSlam? I gotta figure this out. You're the Bret Hart Mark here, bro. I am the Bret Hart Mark. It was at King of the Ring in 1995, Ah, my guy. Damn, you was four years old, bro. I was fucking four years old. And the reason I remember this is because I did my internet research. No, I was kidding. <laughs> the reason I remember this is because uh, my cousin, he had a whole bunch of videotapes of wrestling events, and he would let me borrow them, and so I'd watch them. So at this point, I was maybe five, six, seven years old, just nah, watching bro. old wrestling tapes. He was stealing other tapes, huh? <laughs> wow. Anyways, so I remember this match like it was yesterday because I'm a fucking heart mark, dude. I remember after my birthday, I don't remember how old I was, I got a Best of Bret Hart tape. It was like Greatest Hits of Bret the Hitman Hart. Ooh. And I think this match was actually on there. So I think that's what, how I remember this match. That's what's up. That's what's up. That was the weird stipulation. Kiss my foot match. He actually did kiss his foot. He was funny too. Speaking of weird matches that people like, this is going to be controversial, right? I know we're getting a little off topic right here, but a lot of people hated that Royal Rumble in 2011. That Royal Rumble where there was 40 men in the Rumble and Alberto de Rio came out as victorious. Yeah. I like that Royal Rumble. It was trash. It was really trash. Bro, I'm a big Alberto Del Rio mark, bro. That's probably why. Maybe. You know, I remember the Royal Rumble with uh, it's the Roman Reigns when it was anybody but you, Roman, for the World Heavyweight Championship, bro. Oh. As soon as that shit happened, and I think Triple H was announced that he was going to be in as number two, you know damn well Roman Reigns was going to lose. <laughs> no, I think you're talking, no, number two, no, number three was AJ Styles. Number two, I think it was Rusev. Number 30th was Paul Levesque. Oh, that's what it was. Paul yes, Levesque yes, yes. booked himself to be number 30th, and Paul Levesque ended up winning the championship. Roman had. See, this is why I hate Paul Levesque, the man. <laughs> bro, there's there's more details on why I hate Paul Levesque and bro. his career. That's another story for another day. Bro. I don't want to get triggered right now. So you're triggered because he booked himself to win the championship in a Royal Rumble because he was the booker at that time. So that's what got you triggered. <clears throat> one of the things why. Yes, one of the things why. And you know me, bro. I, I'm, I've been a Roman Reigns mark since day one. Here's the thing. Mr. McMahon did a lot of shitty shit in his career. He screwed a lot of people. Paul Levesque, man, just grinds my gears, man. He grinds my gears. Yeah, dude. So we're just getting off the fucking rails here right now, bro. So speaking of people booking themselves, did you ever watch From Dusk Till Dawn? <laughs> yeah. What? Yes, Why, what's so funny? Yes. You already know what I'm going to talk yes, about, huh? Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino, bro. <laughs> he fucking wrote this movie. He directed it. He produced it. He casted the movie. I'm fucking sure of it. So this motherfucker wrote, <laughs> he storyline <laughs> wrote drinking himself, drinking tequila shot from, from, from the toes of Salma Hayek, bro. <laughs> yeah, and in his movies, a lot of people have said he has a foot fetish. <laughs> Bro, we're so off topic right now, but fuck, <laughs> from d- from dusk till dawn, that guy, he, bu- he booked himself <laughs> to suck on Salma Hag's toes. <laughs> Bro, it's the power of being the booker slash director. <laughs> Shit, man. Oh, all right. I don't even know where we're at right now. No, I know, I know. Uh, right after that, that Miss TV segment, I, I think I counted them. After the Miss TV segment, I think we go to commercial break and we come back. And we see a recap of Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar from earlier on the show. If I'm not mistaken, this was literally the third recap of that same clip that they played over and over and over throughout the show. And I'm like, really? Who forgot it? I mean, I I saw it. I saw when it happened when the show opened. Then they went in commercial break, came back, and then that same clip showed up. Then later on the show, I'm getting triggered, bro. Continue. Yeah, it's big news, but yeah, you know it's a it's a three hour show. What can you expect at that point? Uh, probably a decent match with Nikki Cross, maybe. I mean, she was tag team champion. Nikki Cross, no, bro. That's just me. No. Anyways, yeah, there's a lot of commercials in this one. Lot, not that many matches, not that many segments. A lot of lot of stuff. So you counted them. You said there's three recaps of the thing we saw at the beginning. Yes. All right. I don't have any defense for that, bro. It is what it is. It's a three hour show, and yeah, it is a three-hour show. <laughs> Just got to kill that time. 
All right. So next up, we have Bronson Reed versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Bronson Reed is hot out of the gates. He takes Nakamura to the floor. He drops him with, with a shoulder block off the apron. Then they go to commercial break. I, Adrian, I know you hate the commercial breaks during the matches. Should WWE invest in some PIP or not? I, I don't know. Picture in picture, which if it comes to play, sometimes it's good. Fans in AEW hate it. I don't know why. When you can still see the match. Yeah, they hate it over there. I'm pretty sure they have picture in picture here. I'm pretty sure the fans are going to hate it too. I don't know, man. This was pretty much a, a loss in the shuffle match, I would say. Yeah, three people lost in the shuffle, I would say, to add Tomasa Ciampa, who comes to the ring and attacks Bronson Reed. So Bronson Reed wins and beats Shinsuke Nakamura by disqualification. Nakamura is heated, saying he's tired of everybody getting involved in his business. He shouts, yeah. And you know what? There was a report that was uh, released. WWE personnel are thinking of changing Nakamura's character, making him a little bit more serious. And now I'm like, here we go. The good old copy and paste. From jobber to main event status. That's pretty much what they've been doing lately. Chelsea Greenstone and DeVille, they just became champions. You know, we have Dark Order from Wish, except for Rhea Ripley, are becoming champions and winning big matches. We had a jobber versus jobber match earlier tonight in the Alpha Academy and Viking Raiders. Shayna Baszler, again. I don't know, man. Hopefully, hopefully they can end Shinsuke Nakamura's career on a high note because the man came with a lot of star power when he joined NXT and the main roster. Hopefully they can capitalize on him before he retires. Yeah, hopefully. Nakamura's a fucking beast, bro. One of the three, what do they call them? The three musketeers of New Japan yep. pro wrestling? Three musketeers, second generation of three musketeers along with uh, Shibata and, and Hiroshi Tanahashi. I don't know, bro. You said Shibata, bro, and I want a fucking sandwich right now. Ooh. Speaking of ciabatta, bro, <laughs> best way if you want a sandwich is a chicken sandwich with ciabatta and pesto, bro. That's I think that's one of the best sandwiches I've had. Pesto chicken <laughs> on ciabatta. I'm fucking dead. <laughs> I'm fucking dead. <laughs> oh man, well we're laughing, but here let's talk about something that's no joke. <laughs> Judgment Day versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn for the WWE Undisputed Tag Team Championship. And these motherfuckers still carrying around both tag team championships. And I'm shit's got me triggered. All right, but well, before we move on, I think it's safe to say that I should retire the Dark Order from which Nate. Don't you think so? I'm going to get exposed. I know it, bro. I feel exposed coming. But I'm going to say yes, let's retire it because Dark Order from Wish is trash and they've evolved into something better. I wasn't exposing anybody. I think I was pretty much just flip-flopping myself. <laughs> Damn. Although, yes, they were, they were dropping a few times in the beginning. Ever since Rhea Ripley got that title, I mean, she's been a lackey now, but they've been a little bit more dominant. Dominic Mysterio's been in the ring with some good wrestlers out there losing, sometimes winning. Damian Priest lost to Bad Bunny, but won that briefcase. Finn Balor lost a match against Rollins and is demanding another match, and he got it. So, I mean, who knows, man? I mean, I think I should retire the name. What are you going to name him then instead? JD. Wait, speaking of JD, whatever oh happened to that God. guy? I fucking knew that something was coming. Wait, I know we're getting sidetracked. But whatever happened to JD Madonna? The man came in with Segun, with sort of, of a hype. He started a beat with Ziggler. I remember you telling me, oh, but a Ziggler. Ziggler's won a lot of things. I haven't seen Ziggler since. I haven't seen JD Madonna since. Yeah, bro. See, I knew there was going to be a setup here for something. I actually know. It just came into the fly. It just came nah, to me to bro. my end of fly. You fucking set it up. No, but either way, I don't know where he's at. He's probably down there in developmental right now. No, actually, one of the fans told me he's been uh, wrestling a lot in uh, main event. So, bro, he's getting some matches out there. Stop. But do you, th I'm asking you this question now before we get into the match. Did you, Madonna, do you think his little, his little push, his little on-screen TV time is being halted because they were hinting at Judgment Day splitting? And now that they're like, nah, I don't think we're going to split them. Now JD Madonna is sort of lost in the shuffle in the moment. He's lost in the shuffle. I don't think they're breaking up anytime soon. They got so much good shit going on right now that I don't think they're going to break up anytime soon. That is true. That is true. All right, let's continue with the match. All right, back to the match. Judgment Day are in control. They're working over Sammy, doing the quick tags, doing the thing that you're supposed to do in tag team matches which is tag. Owens gets a hot tag on Rey Mysterio. Now the tables have turned. I'm not going to get into too much detail of the match. If you want to run down the match, just watch it, dude. Seriously. But Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn win with a hell of a kick from Sami Zayn on Dominic Mysterio, retaining the WWE Tag Team Championships. But there's some stuff in this match that has nothing to do with the actual match, Adrian. The one, the only Liv Morgan runs in. Liv Morgan runs in and she attacks Rhea Ripley, essentially causing a distraction to where... Sammy, you know, does explore a suplex into the corner, stunner from Owens, 
you know, Mitt Dominic Mysterio takes the L. And that's the show Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn taking the win with the help of Liv Morgan. So, uh, mm, I don't know what to say about the end of the show. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a good way to put Dark Order on TV. I know last week they were all over the place on Raw. This week they limited their TV time to, what, three segments? Three segments and then take over the next show, which is NXT on Tuesday. Yes, yes, yes. That is something that we talked about. And like I was saying last time we were we were talking about Raw, anything can happen in title matches. Yeah, I know you say you don't like them, but the card is always subject to change. Do you like the idea now that Dominic Mysterio is going to be facing off against Mustafa Ali? I do like it. You know, this is a thing. I get triggered when they announce, you know, title matches and then have a title match before the announced title match. But this one, Dominic Mysterio actually wins on Tuesday NXT against Wesley and the fucking... I've never seen so many people hate someone winning the championship in a long, long, long time, but I love it. Yeah, it was a, it was a little bit of a, of a surprise to all the fans. I think most of the fans were thinking the same thing you were thinking. I don't think Wesley's going to lose the championship. You know, he does have a match later on the month against Mustafa Ali, but... You know, I was doing some reading online, Twitter, and Facebook. There's mixed reviews out there. A lot of people love it. A lot of people say Judgment Day is on the rise. It's their time. The bloodline is over and it's their time, which is good. You always have to have a top faction in your promotion. Some people out there say they really had to go down to developmental and beat up a champion four against one. I mean, both of them make a lot of sense. I don't know. I guess I just have mixed feelings because it is developmental. You did have to gang up on one person to win a title. Pretty much copy and paste from Bloodline, if you ask me. Damn. Yeah, pretty much. Either way, I'm happy for him, for La Raza, right? Oh, yep. And Dominic Mysterio gained his first championship gold, right? No. Psych. It's a second one because he was tag team champion along with his dad as the Mysterios. Back in 2021, the pandemic era. Yep. Of WWE. So yeah, let's get into some some news for today. Yesterday, we got a report that Teddy Hart was arrested, allegedly, in possession of ecstasy and steroids. This guy, of course, you know what? I don't know. Let me give you a rundown. So this guy, Teddy Hart, great wrestler. He's part of the Hart family. You can see his life on Peacock's documentary, Dangerous Breed, essentially about his life, abusive behavior towards girlfriends, his ex-wife, this possible... uh missing person that he might have may have killed or got the hit on it's a it's a crazy story so if you want to watch it go ahead and watch it. it's on peacock adrian what do you got to say about this guy getting arrested again i don't know man it's like if you're part of the hard family you have an amazing career ahead of you if you put your mind to it i mean look at solo sakol i don't know i don't know how many years he's been on the business but I'm telling you right now i for sure know it's not more than five if you put your mind to it and you come from an amazing wrestling family you will have the connections right away. There was a video uh, earlier on the week that I saw about Edge and another Canadian wrestler um, in a talk show asking Bret Hart questions on how they can get to the WWE. Bret Hart pretty much said, you know, it was it was, it was different for me because, you know, my family comes from a wrestling family and we have, you know, we had a dungeon where we train and we had a connection. So that's how I got into the business. Teddy Hart could have done the same thing. I mean, yes, he was a wrestler. He was in the business, but he never made it to the big one. Technically, he did make it to the big one because he was at that time the youngest oh, WF right. superstar signed to a contract and he couldn't keep his shit together. So he got fired and then he was been bouncing around. We've seen him on um, the short lived MTV wrestling show Wrestling Society X. We've seen him in AAA in La Legion Extranjera. He's been wrestling everywhere dude but this guy just I mean it seems like wherever he goes there's issues that follow. He was in Ring of Honor and was just doing backflips off the steel cage without giving his uh, other wrestlers warning and they were telling him to stop mid-match and he was just kept going up there doing flips uh, and they all didn't want to not catch him because you know he's going to get hurt that way. So this guy's been in involved in quite a lot of things. It's just sad to see somebody that you know at the time was billed as being the next big thing now just being just having a lot of issues dude yeah man i mean he can't keep a job so it's like even if he comes out of this you know he beats this case or whatever I, and you're a booker are you gonna book him on your show knowing he has a baggage on him no at this point no yeah. it's 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 crazy <sighs> Speaking of people with baggage here, not that he has baggage, but just that, you know, he says his balls are massive. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Miz. Uh, he was he was interviewed because he did not get the role of Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat 2. And I'm fucking triggered, bro. 
he was the perfect person for that role, I think. So yeah, The Miz misses out on being Johnny Cage, dude. I'm sad. He really wanted to be Johnny Cage, just so you guys know. Yeah, I think that that role went to Carl Urban, but I think that was announced long ago, though. I think a month or two ago. Yeah, it was announced quite a lot long ago, but they just interviewed him um, recently. I forgot who interviewed him. Yeah, it, but Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, maybe, yes. yeah. So maybe nobody asked him the question, but yes, yeah, because I remember when they were teasing Johnny Cage in the Mortal Kombat 2 movie, right away, somebody said online, The Miz, on Twitter, and from there it went viral. So, I mean, yeah, it would have been a perfect role for, for The Miz, but let's face it, the dude is a D-lister, C-lister. Damn, bro. M-lister, Y-lister, W-lister, Z-lister. He ain't no A-list, but you know what is an A-list, though? What's an A-list? This blind joke gimmicky wrestler I got for you right here. The top five joke gimmicky wrestlers right here. This is yo oh shit God. right up your alley, bro. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to give you these names, not in order. These are just gimmicky wrestlers. And you're going to put them in an order, but in, in whatever order that you want. But once you put somebody in a number... You can't move him. You can't exchange him. Let me know your reasons why he's on your top five of this blind gimmicky joke wrestler. You ready? Jesus. So before you ask me, bro, follow us on Trig Wrestling, T-R-I-G-G underscore wrestling on Instagram, Twitter, uh, everywhere else we're Triggered Wrestling. Follow us. Give us a shout. Follow. Let us know what you think about this list. So go, go ahead, Adrian. What's the what's going on here? All right. So right now I'm starting off with Eugene. Fuck. I don't know who's coming next. So... I'm going to go with four. Eugene, four. Okay, cool. Any reason why? Just because I don't know who's coming next, so I want to leave some time, <laughs> <I know. laughs> some way in, yep. in the in the top. And I don't think he's the best, so um, that's why. And he's actually, I, I probably shouldn't put him as fifth because, you know, yeah. in the words of Tropic Thunder, you don't go full R word. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh. That is true. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. And I started an easy one with you. Last week, I, I went Irving really hard. I went with the RVD. But all right. Mm-hmm. Damien Sandow. Oh, with him as the stunt double? As anything, bro. Oh, as any of his... I'm going to go with five. Ooh, I'm going to go with five. five? Yeah. All right. Number three, I'm going to go with stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. Oh, man. You know, I love the hurricane. He beat the rock. <laughs> <laughs> He did. He did. He did. He beat the rock. Oh, man. And then he was the tag team with Kane as Hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Oh, I'm going to go with number two. I'm going to go. With, I'm going to put the Hurricane as number two. Top five goofy gimmicks. All right. This one, I'm going to throw you off really hard. AEW is the librarian. The the man, not the woman. Oh, see, this is exactly what I was, I knew I was gonna, I'm going to put him as number three because Pete Avalon, I don't like him. The wingman, Peter Avalon, trash. <laughs> Cool, and then you still have... So, the last one is it has to be number one, right? The uh, last one's got to be number one, bro. Oh, but... nice, bro. Otis. Oh, okay. I'll take that as number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, see, I knew I had to leave Otis towards the end because you, you didn't see them coming, especially after I went with Eugene and Damien Sandow. No, I had no idea who was going to be number one, bro. But I'm glad it's Otis. I'm, yeah. Uh, honestly, in that list, I would probably put Hurricane as number one, Otis as number two. Uh, obviously, the librarian is number five. Yep. Uh, yeah, man. Otis, he he does the worm and he calls it the caterpillar, bro. Fuck, that's all you gotta do. <laughs> from, the Otis from, is good is a good comedic rustler. Caterpillar from a Bug's Life. That's all I think about. <laughs> Dan- yeah, exactly. <laughs> caterpillar from Bug's I'm Life. I'm gonna make that meme. Trademarking it right now. Nobody, if you're listening to this right now, I already did it. So you can't do it. I already did it. <laughs> <laughs> Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. Remember that shit? <laughs> yep. Trigger did it. Trigger did it. Trig- yeah, Trigger did it. Trigger did it fuck all right well that's our show for today you know go to our website check out what events we got going on triggerwrestling.com follow us on the socials look up by trigger wrestling i'm sure it'll pop up wherever you type that in but if you can't it's t-r-i-g-g underscore wrestling for the handle that's on instagram twitter give us a follow give us a shout out let us know your top five we got merch probably coming soon buy some merch yep 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 and be sure to tune in to all of our youtube videos we have interviews with a lot of people as well too some top five lists as well what triggers you about wrestling over there in tiktok we have a lot of content going on so please go out there and watch it we do this for you guys to watch and listen give us a like comment and follow please yep and don't forget to check all of our content that we're going to be putting out for collectible stampede parking lot brawl yes yes and speaking of collectible stampede too guapo lupe lost his title over the weekend oh damn that's gonna be a good good interview yes yes it is all right guys this is adrian i'm with brian and stay triggered bam, bam. <laughs>